Welcome back to another episode of Home Built Workshop. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I made this cool, adjustable book stand for my daughter's room. It's a design that I got from another popular YouTube channel that you may have heard of. I like the design so much, I decided to just build one just like it for myself. My daughter has a ton of books. We keep them on her dresser. We've been using these little sheet metal stamped bookends. It's got a little rubber grippy surface on the bottom. They don't hold the books up for anything. They're always falling over every time you get a book out and it's really frustrating, especially when they fall off the dresser and land on your foot. Trust me, I know that from experience. That hurts. So I had to come up with an idea that would hold these things up a lot better than these things. I was thinking originally about just making some regular bookends, but I remembered a video that I saw a while back on a channel on YouTube that you may have heard of. It was a video posted by Steve Ramsey at Woodworking for Mere Mortals. So I hopped back on the old interweb and found that video. It's posted quite a while back, but I will put a link to that video down in the description in case you want to see it. I really like the idea. It has adjustable sides for the bookends that really hold the books up well. I decided to take Steve's idea and build one of these myself. I still have some of the oak that was harvested from my grandpa's property in Pennsylvania. It was harvested from his woods, cut down on site on a portable sawmill. I still have a little bit of it left and I want to make some projects out of that so I thought this would be a perfect project to use for these boards. First I'm going to rip down some strips and that will make up the rails of this book stand. Now with the rails ripped down, I'll readjust the fence and I'll cut a couple of pieces that'll make up the stands. Now I'll switch to my crosscut sled and I'll square up the ends of the rails first. In order to make sure that both sides are the exact same length, I'm clamping a stop block to my crosscut sled. So that takes care of the four pieces that are going to make up the frame. There's not a whole lot of parts to this and it's not really complicated at all. Before I can start assembly, I need to go ahead and rip down the pieces that will make up the actual sides of these book stand. I'm going to go ahead and rip them both to the same width. I don't know what it is, just ripping down those two pieces. That wood smells really weird. It's like, I don't know, it smells really nasty, really. It smells like oak, but it's got a really weird smell. I don't no idea where that's coming from. But, oh well, keep building. Now I'll switch back to my crosscut sled and cut these things down to their final height. I'm going back to the stop block clamped to the sled, again, to make sure the two pieces are the same. Overall, these pieces are in pretty good shape. This one's got a little bit of a crack that I wasn't able to avoid when I was cutting it down. I'm going to go ahead and try to squirt a little bit of glue in there, clamp it up, just to try to seal that crack. I'm going to try to bend this a little bit if I can. Try to work the glue down into the crack. There's not going to be any stress on this piece at all, so I really don't think it's going to be an issue. I just kind of want to stop it from cracking any further. And I'll just clamp that up, try to squeeze that crack together. And I see some glue squeezing out, so that tells me I got a little bit of glue down in there. I'll just let that dry. So the way this is going to go together is the two short pieces are going to stand on the edge. And these are going to sit like that, but they're not going to sit on top. I need to recess them down in this board so that they sit flush. So now I need to do a little bit of layout, figure out where I need to make the cuts, and I'm just going to cut a notch out of each one of these. I'm going to put down a little piece of double-sided tape first to hold the two pieces together. That way when I make the cuts, I won't have to do it on both pieces. I can do them all at the same time. All I need to do is line up the edges, 
stick them together. That tape doesn't seem to be sticking very well, so I'm just gonna wrap them some masking tape. Now with some stop blocks set up on the crosscut sled, I can go ahead and nibble away the center to cut this groove to accept these rails. Now I'll just readjust my stop blocks and the depth of cut on my table saw blade. And I'll repeat the exact same process on the sides. The last thing I need to do I need to just cut a little arc on the top of these. And at this point in the process, I realized I should not have untaped these two pieces from each other. So to cut this arc, I just retaped them. I'll just use my jigsaw to cut out that arc. And I'll start sanding everything out with my homemade spindle sander. Then I'll follow that up with my random orbit sander. And finally, some hand sanding. My favorite part. I'm not doing any sort of router profile or anything like that on these pieces. It'd be really easy to do and would dress it up a little bit. I'm just keeping it super, super simple, just breaking the edges with some sandpaper. Now I've got all the pieces sanded smooth. Before I go ahead and assemble this, I wanna put a design on the side of this. I'm gonna use an inkjet transfer to put the design on there. So I came up with a design that I wanted to use in Photoshop, and then after peeling off all the labels from a sheet of sticker stock, I ran the paper through my inkjet printer. This puts the ink on the glossy side of the stock where it doesn't actually dry. From there, I'm gonna very carefully trim it down to size, being very careful not to touch the wet ink. Then I'll just line it up on my piece and press the wet ink into the wood. I'm using a piece of tape on one side because in my test pieces, I found that it, the paper has a tendency to slip around. <clears throat> That's cool. And I'll just repeat that same procedure for the other side. You just wanna be really careful when you're doing this because that ink right now is still super wet and if you touched it with your hand, it would smear and ruin the design. These came out really cool. I think this is gonna look really awesome. So the thing about this inkjet transfer method it doesn't give you a picture quality transfer, which I kind of like. It kind of has a little bit of a distressed look, which actually looks really nice on here. Once the ink has had plenty of time to dry, I'm just gonna top coat it with some clear polyurethane. Since I haven't glued this up yet, I've covered the glue joints with some masking tape to prevent the, the polyurethane from covering those areas. Now that the polyurethane has had plenty of time to dry, now I can go ahead and get this thing glued up. I've already removed the tape where my glue joints are gonna be. All I gotta do now is put a little bit of wood glue in there and clamp it up. Assembly's a little bit tricky. So you gotta get all the parts lined up. 
at the same time. The tape lines make it pretty easy to line up these pieces because I can see right where the polyurethane is not on the wood. And that, that way I know right where it needs to go. A few clamps to hold it together. And we'll let it dry. Now that the glue's dry, I've got it out of the clamps. Here's the final bookshelf. I put a little bit of paste wax on the runners so that these sides can slide nice and smooth. I think it's going to work really well. I really like how the sides are adjustable to hold a different amount of books. So again, I'd like to thank Steve Ramsey at Woodworking for Mere Mortals for this idea. I think the project turned out really great. It's going to get some great use in my daughter's room to hold all of her books. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any episodes. You can also follow me on Twitter at HomeBuiltShop. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to another episode of Home Built Workshop. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I made this cool adjustable thing here. <laughs> Completely forgot what I was going to say. I'm trying to do this introduction. There's a really loud jet going over. So we'll wait. Okay, that's better. <laughs> that's pretty good tape. Apparently three pieces overdoes it just a little. If only the tape would have stuck like that the first time. I wouldn't have wrapped it with masking tape. Yeah, it was a different kind of tape though. That's some good stuff right there. I don't know where I got it or who makes it, but it's pretty good. Alright. 